I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the long-awaited postpartum recovery and specifically today I'm gonna tell you how to heal your vag. I'm gonna give you lots of tips. I'm gonna tell you what's normal, what's not normal, some things you can do to help soothe your lady parts and make you feel a lot better, less postpartum pain, and then help you to heal as quick as possible, whether you tore, had an episiotomy, or not. Before I get started, don't forget to click that little subscribe button. Maybe you've been here before and you've seen some of my videos and you've been hesitating on it. Today's the day. I would very much appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. And then let me give you some some tips for how to keep that vagina nice and healed and living your best life. Let's get started. This fun little vagina info. Vagina. It's vagina day. Postpartum recovery is probably the number one concern that women have other than like the actual labor and birth and concerns of the pain and discomfort and coping and all of that. And so you guys have been asking all over the place, whether it be on Instagram or here on the comments, for a video on postpartum recovery. And that is a massive topic, so I'm gonna be splitting it into multiple videos. And today, we're gonna to talk just strictly about your vagina. So there are different levels of tears. There's also an episiotomy, where your provider may cut the tissue between the bottom of the vagina hole and the rectum. And then there's women that don't have any tears at all. And so I will speak to all of those types of women. I just wanna mention very quickly that there is a difference between a first and a second degree tear and a third and a fourth degree tear, particularly the fourth like is another level of pain and discomfort. So mostly this is gonna be for the women who didn't tear, who have that first or second degree tear, which is very common, or they have the episiotomy. And then I'm going to mention the third and fourth degrees, but those I'll just say right now that you're definitely gonna wanna follow up with your provider about the recovery and making sure that everything's healing nicely down there. Also seeing a pelvic floor therapist, which I'm getting to. The first thing, when you think about going into your postpartum period, which postpartum is just the first era after birth, once you've delivered the placenta and the baby, is something that you've heard me say before that's going to carry you through labor and birth, but also into postpartum, and that is listening to your body, guys. It is so important that you are listening to your sensations. If you're feeling like you're doing too much, you're doing too much. If you feel like you need to rest, you need to rest. The postpartum period is actually a really cool time for you if you haven't done it already, which I do encourage you to get really in tune with your body during pregnancy, and that pregnancy usually is a prompt to help you to do that. But now's the time to really go inside of you, recognizing that you are needing to be healthy so that you can provide for your infant. And so if you're tired, sleep. You're gonna really wanna slow everything down. There's a book that I have been reading again recently that I really love called The Fourth Trimester by Kimberly Johnson. And she really encourages you guys to consider rest. And particularly in North America, we just go, 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 go. And what your body needs in the postpartum period is to slow everything down and just nurture your baby, nurture your body and your soul with the right foods and the right amount of activity and support and touch, all of that. So she really gets into that. If that's a good book, I'll link that on my Amazon list for my book recommendations that everything's going to be in the description box for you. Resting to recover, guys, that you are not up exercising right away. I know that like you may be anticipating getting back to your regular routine. That is not the time frame right now. Your body needs a moment to recover. It just went through a very stressful process. So rest, but then also not being totally sedentary where you're just like laying in a bed, not moving for 24 seven. You wanna get up, you wanna move around. And usually the recommendation for activity after a vaginal birth is take the first week, slow down and like, you know, walk, walk around the house, walk to the bathroom, pace, get up, do what feels right. That's key, is listening to your body. But after about a week or so, depending on how you're feeling, if you're feeling good, go on that light walk. You can resume kind of your normal activity. That doesn't mean exercise though. That just means normal activity. Get outside. Outside and being in nature is so important for the soul and for recovery just kind of in general. That's gonna be really important for you, okay? So resting, and also getting up and moving, usually around the seven to 12 day mark, however you're feeling, backtrack. So in the hospital setting, you are gonna wanna have really comfy clothes. 
I see women bring their yoga pants to the hospital for delivery, leave your yoga pants at home. You're wearing loose fitting clothing, those little nightgowns, the like little nursing nightgowns are really nice, big comfy sweatpants. You want to be able to have easy access for the nurses to check your belly and look at your bleeding. And then you also want clothes and underwear, which I'll talk about that in a second, that if they get soiled, meaning if you bleed through them, because you're going to bleed like a heavy period, that it's okay if they get blood on them. So not like your best nightgown or your white everything, that you want to wear darker colors just in case they get blood on them or stuff that you don't really care. So loose fitting clothing is really comfortable for the postpartum period. Now, as far as bleeding goes, you will bleed like a heavy period and the bleeding should always be more to less not less to more now if you've been laying around for that seven days when you get home and then all of a sudden you stand up and maybe you're a little more active that day that sometimes does increase your bleeding a little bit but usually my rule of thumb and your provider may have a different rule of thumb and remember they always trump what I have to say but you may pass some little clots, like little globby, bloody stuff out of you, and that is normal, but if the clot is bigger than a golf ball size, like a solid golf ball, that's gonna be a reason to either, if you're in the hospital, call your nurse, have them look at it, or if you're at home, just give a phone call to your OB or your midwife. They are going to give you the most massive pad you've ever seen in your life, okay? So, and I was looking for one today and I don't happen to have one at home. The most biggest pad ever and then these like mesh panties that are one size fit all panties that are so nice. Take all of the ones in your room home with you because you're really gonna like them later. You're gonna put the big pad on, it looks like a big pad, maybe you haven't used a pad in forever and now's your time, you're going back to your adolescence. The rule of thumb for bleeding is you're not filling one of like, they're like diapers guys, these huge pads in an hour or less. If you are just like kind of pouring out blood and it's just you're filling pad after pad after pad, that's too much bleeding. Bleeding is one of the number one complications that can happen postpartum, so we just wanna be paying attention to that. Now, as the days go on, you can expect to bleed less and less and less, kind of like a period, but you're gonna have some sort of abnormal, abnormal meaning like bleeding for the next two weeks, probably a week and a half, for like a period and then you're gonna have pinkish discharge and then it's gonna turn yellowish over the next about six weeks. Nothing in the vagina for for sure that six weeks slash until your doctor tells you that you're cleared to do that. So healing your vagina is leaving it alone. Put the pad on, pay attention to your bleeding and then trust that your body knows how to heal. If you tore and they did have to repair you at all, it's safe to assume that those stitches are going to dissolve over time. So you don't need to do anything to them. You do wanna keep the area not soaking wet. So if you're sitting in like a soaking wet pad for a few hours, like your vag is gonna get all pruney down there. Air is also good for it, oxygen heals. And so to make sure that you're changing out your pads regularly, when you go to the bathroom, they're gonna give you a squirt bottle and then you're gonna fill that with warm water. Warm is key, cold sometimes feels good too, but whatever you want. And so then when you pee, because everyone's worried about peeing for the first time, you're just gonna kind of squat over the toilet and then squirt the squirt bottle on your vag to dilute the pee in case like some people have little tears around their urethra where their pee comes out and that's gonna burn a lot. So you wanna dilute the pee slash if you don't feel burny then you don't have to do it while you pee, just pee and then you're gonna squirt yourself off with some of that water and then just pat dry. And you do wanna make sure that there's no like little remnants of tissue paper down there. Sometimes people will prefer to use a dry washcloth and just use one at a time. They have a lot of washcloths in the hospital. Or you can use a paper towel and just dab dab let it be, and then I like to do a little airing action where you're like, dry, dry it off, so that you get some of that oxygen and you're not like keeping the moisture down there. You wanna keep it clean and dry, as dry as possible because you still are bleeding. So the stitches will dissolve. All you need to do is the little spray bottle thingy. As far as pooping goes, this doesn't have to do with your vagina, this is like a little bonus. Some women have hemorrhoids, and if you have a hemorrhoid, that's where there's numbing creams, there's numbing sprays, which that also can go for your vagina, like a dermaplast, you can ask for a dermaplast. Down there, it is safe to use after birth, and if you're really burny down there, you can spray down the area, and that'll numb the area a little bit. The first poop is always very scary for people, so make sure you're taking a stool softener. They'll probably offer you something like Colace in the hospital. That's just over the counter. It's not a laxative. It's just a softener to like pull water into your bowel so your stool is a lot softer versus rock solid. Particularly if you're taking narcotics, like if you're taking more than what they give you postpartum, which is a Motrin, I'm getting to that, then you're gonna want to for sure be taking a stool softener because narcotics, the higher level of medications are gonna make you constipated and that can be worse than healing your batch. And then you don't wanna strain too 
too much, just kind of let it come out. You want to wipe off really well. You can use washcloths if needed, or you can use that spray bottle on your butt as well. And then there's also some like hemorrhoid creams that they can give you postpartum. The other thing for soothing your vagina, now this goes for not really when you're going to the bathroom, but there's lots of different schools of thought. Cold is usually very soothing. A lot of times if you push for a long time, your labia, meaning like the lips on the vagina, may kind of blow up like a balloon. Like you feel like you have like something in between your legs. Ice can help with that swelling. The other thing they're gonna offer you likely is gonna be a Motrin or an ibuprofen. That's going to help with swelling. It's also gonna help with any discomfort. Now that's a super mild medication, very much safe for breastfeeding. Not safe during pregnancy, but safe once you've delivered the baby. And that'll just help to keep your pain under control because you shouldn't be rolling around, writhing in pain. If you have that much pain, that would be abnormal and that's a reason to alert your provider. But a Motrin typically is enough to cover people's pain and discomfort, whether that be from the uterine cramps that happen when you breastfeed, or whether that be just from some vagina soreness. For the first day or so, you're gonna be swollen, well, more than a day sometimes, but the ice packs are also gonna help you to de-swell down there. You can try tux pads, which I've added all of this stuff to my Amazon list for postpartum, and again, I'll link that down below. But they're like witch hazel pads. They a lot of times have these in the hospital. You can ask for them. Throw that on your badge, put the pad on top, and that can be really soothing and helping you heal your vagina. There is, for going home, once you're like a week or so postpartum, there is a school of thought that recommends vaginal steaming. This is like Eastern Western medicine. This has been done for many, many years, particularly I think it originated in Korea, where you would put different herbs in water, well, boiling water, like really hot water, and then you would sit on a stool or you would sit on something that was not touching your vagina, and then the steam from that like herbal, medicinal kind of steam, they call this a vagacial, a vagacial, like a facial for your vagina, <laughs> where you steam your vagina, and they said that that like closes everything up inside. Now, my like nurse brain says that like when you're sitting over it, your vagina might be open, but you're cervix is closed inside. So it's mostly for your vagina and really any kind of heat will bring extra circulation, which in theory will help you heal your vagina. You can look into that if you like, just know that it's a thing. The other more like Western version of that would be a sitz bath. A sitz bath, there's like the actual sitz bath and then there's like the home version of a sitz bath. And the home version of a sitz bath or the idea would be that you have some warm water and then you just sit your vagina into that place or like your labia, just so that it's touching your vagina in warm water. It can be soothing, it helps with that circulation. Now, some people will add some things to that, such as Epsom salts, people will do essential oils, they'll do different herbs. The thought being that that helps to heal your vagina. That can be very soothing. It actually is recommended after a vaginal birth. Now, you're not starting that until like day three, four, five, when your doctor clears you for sitz baths. Although, some people do it right away, flex and flow on that one. The other thing is you can buy a sitz bath. So I've also added that to my Amazon list where you put it over the toilet and it just sits there and then you fill it up with warm water. It's not burning water, it's warm water. And then you just sit on it for a while, soak in that vag in the water for like 15 or 20 minutes. And that can also be really soothing. You can do it once a day and that will help with your vaginal recovery. We've talked about medications, we've talked about sitz baths. Now there's some other things that you can put on your vagina to help it heal in general, guys. This is where back to instinct, back to trusting our bodies, your bodies know how to heal themselves. There's actually a, like, some interesting research that shows that the women that are stitched up with a first or secondary tear and the ones that aren't repaired, or they just kind of let it heal back together, uh, they heal the same. So typically, they're not gonna let you be with a wound. They're gonna close it up, particularly related probably to bleeding. Your body knows what to do to heal itself. So if you keep it clean and dry, and you're just paying attention to that you're not spiking a fever, that there isn't like pus down there, that it's not hot to the touch, like it should be warm because like your parts down there are in general a little bit warmer than like my arm skin. So it's warm, but it's not like hot or it's not blistering or red, like super red that's getting worse and worse. Those are things you're gonna wanna tell your provider about, but otherwise keeping it clean and dry is cool. You're not putting antibiotic ointment on it. It's not necessary. There are peri sprays or like different sprays that different companies have made. Usually those have witch hazel in them. 
Usually they may have like an essential oil or an aloe vera in them. And so you can get those online. I've put a couple on my Amazon list. And then I also make my mama's an essential oil peri spray that's witch hazel with some of my key essential oils for healing. My mamas have reported being very happy with that. So I'm actually gonna do an Instagram post and I will give you what I put in that peri spray and then how to order some essential oils if you would like. You can go over to my Instagram, at Bundle Birth, and I'll have that post up and ready for you over there. Essential oils are great for healing so long as your doctor is cool with it. And then the other thing that people will make ahead of time is what we call padsicles. And padsicles, that's actually gonna be my next video. I'm gonna do a how to make a padsicle and with your different options and different considerations for making a padsicle. A padsicle is basically like a frozen pad with some goodies on it that help you heal your vagina. So you put the cold on your vagina, it helps soothe the vagina area and helps it to potentially heal faster. The other thing just to keep in mind is this whole idea of you are what you eat. So nutritious foods that you're eating, warm soups, that you're having teas, that you're having lots of water, that you're paying attention to the nutrients that you're putting in your body in postpartum is gonna be super important for tissue healing that it's like you're providing the building blocks to build stronger tissues. It's also kind of the idea behind collagen-rich foods. So I do recommend to my mamas that you eat collagen-rich foods. One of the best ways to do that is bone broth. That could be another YouTube video if you want. But a bone broth is gonna be super collagen-rich and that balances the amount of elastin that you have in your body. So elastin makes your tissue super stretchy and fluid, and which you can imagine is really good for delivery. But afterwards, we need your the tissues to build back strong and supported and that's where the collagen comes in so a collagen supplement or like collagen rich foods are gonna be really good for you postpartum but really just paying attention to your nutrients that you're continuing to take your prenatal vitamin and that you're supporting those tissues in regenerating and growing strong and healthy with proper nutrition and then last but not least I really do want to mention just because I feel like it's under talked about although it's starting to come back is the whole pelvic floor things so at the six-week mark if you feel like you're still peeing yourself or you feel like you still have pain down there or you try to have have sex and sex is super uncomfortable and there's no way now mind you sex is gonna be different the first time you have it you can heal your vagina back to being normal slash even better than before but if you're having issues particularly pain with sex then I want to make known to the world that there are pelvic floor therapists out there. There's sexological body workers, there's other types of specialties that are specific to pelvic floor that help you heal down there and are gonna give you even more specific information about what's going on. Because it's one thing to tear the tissues, but if you tear into the pelvic floor, which is a whole muscle group video coming, then it potentially could affect other functions down there. So we wanna heal you not only just the skin, but we want to heal you from the inside out and make sure that everything is intact and you can really live a normal full life. So if you're having issues, reach out to your OB, get a referral for a pelvic floor therapist. If you're pregnant now, find somebody now. See them, have them assess you. They can give you tips on whether or not your pelvic floor is too strong or too weak, some exercises that you can do, and then you can go from there so that you have them on board for postpartum. For those of you that did have the third or fourth degree tear, I just want to make the comment that you do need to be following up with your OB. You definitely need to see that pelvic floor therapist. You're probably gonna have to take it easier than the first or second degree tears, okay? The recovery from a fourth degree tear, which tears all the way to the rectum, that is super uncommon, but if it were to happen to you, you're gonna need a team on board to make sure that you're healing correctly, that you can live that full life. So that's probably my biggest tip for you because each case is gonna be super specific and different for everybody. <sighs> that was a lot. Of of little things so I hope that was super helpful to you guys I hope that answered a ton of your questions I did throw out a poll on Instagram you guys sent in so many good questions and so I will loop back around in an Instagram live over there I make follow-through with a coffee and questions if you have any questions throw them in the comment box down below and I can follow up with the coffee and questions this is a really big topic and so I tried to condense it and give you some like really tangible things to expect and ways that you can help heal your vag but ultimately guys your vagina knows how to heal itself your body was made to have a baby was made to recover and, and your vagina can heal it can go back to normal it won't be like this forever okay? but if you're having issues talk about them and get your team together so that they can help you to heal your vagina the best it can be we all want healthy healed intact vaginas if you 
have any other comments or questions, any ideas for future videos. If you want to take a childbirth class, I have that over on my website. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching through your pregnancy, I have a whole package for that. If you're in LA, you need a doula, you know the spiel. I am here for you. If you haven't subscribed already, I so appreciate it if you subscribe. Keep coming back, keep engaging. I, I so appreciate you guys so much. Go heal your vaginas, your vajayjays. And until next time, don't forget to flex and flow, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Let's talk about your vagina today. Wow. Vagina. Oh God, okay. We don't want you to tear into your butthole. Now, okay, okay. Let's talk about your vagina. Your vag, your lady parts. What else do you call it? Vagina. It's hot in this room, always. I'm gonna turn out my air. I always sweat. Your lady bits feel a little better about themselves. <laughs> to help you have a more soothed, more fast vagina. Not a fast vagina. I got nothing else.